Hello there, I'm Skontulus, and this is Tuppin Deck Tech, where I present to you decks that are fun, strong, or interesting. Today we are playing a high momentum strategy that plays as many generic legendary units as possible to end the game off any opportunity. And that's even without the new buffs to Thunder Edge. Once the balance patch drops, this deck will be toxic. The strategy is inspired by the classic meta breaker big red decks, but without the excess of buffs in standard that those decks usually play, we gotta get a little creative and instead play a couple of nasty combos to control the pace of the game until we can win off a single broken unit. There's two different two card combos that are designed to make our opponent go first so that we can play our damage cards and charge AP. The most obvious combo and format defining for red is chairperson into kernel. Reusing your broken interaction while getting broken stats on board, but the play that makes kernel actually broken is how the card works when played on an empty board. If you have no units, when played for 3 MP, Colonel will simply move himself to the EX pocket and draw a new card. If you do this turn 1 while you're both at 10 MP, your opponent is forced to play. Or you can do it again and again for infinite AP. Lastly, Colonel can be used to repeat a few key legendaries, but that's a lot more niche than it seems. Playing him early and for the combo with Chairperson is 90% of what this card will do. Our other early game starter is Sarutobi Sasuke. I could have sworn those were two different characters. Regardless, his invasion works kinda like the shwoos we do with Colonel. Invasion will, by moving Sasuke into your EX pocket, spend 4 MP to play him 13 seconds later, with a 3 pierce damage effect for free. This kinda of forces your opponent to play first or you get a free unit. They will take the 3 damage, but most players want the momentum and will just play something with more than 3 HP, and that's when you hit him with the Made With Love. Then, if Sasuke successfully pierces, he triggers his plus 2 plus 2 and has Rush to try for another proc. With the new Thunder Edge, this card's gonna be a little unfair, and he's got a lot of plays already. And before we move on to a dozen legendaries, we have my one crazy spicy tech, the Cyber Elf Ballet was made for Amaterasu Thunder Edge. For 2 MP, this card grants 2 shields with our hero art. They are delayed, so they can't respond to a damage action, but once you drop your win condition, removing an entire way of interacting with it twice wins games a lot. And now, where to even start? Dart, a few cards deserve special mention. Battle Chip Hero Ryu.exe is the last card that you should try to mulligan for. First is the two two card combos that we talked about, but besides that, Ryu is the gas. The the new Steel Samurai could also sort of fit this slot, but most people probably don't want to spend the 3200 on it. Regardless, Hotto Shot is the strongest card you can give this type of strategy, and that alone makes this Ryu an ideal turn 1. But if your opponent ever plays first, like many confident red or green players do, this card can body them. Battle Chip Ryu is so underrated and is probably the most fun card in the list. The one other standout game breaker is Sweat, Tears, and Friendship. In five lines of text, what this card does is distribute plus nine, plus nine across all of our units, as long as we draw the two card combo. We even play a second target for slightly reduced value, just so we draw a combo more often. And the two discards, Dragon Lord's Punishment and Fire Forged Friendship are also great control tools to break boards in their own right. Big fan of this 5 card package, but boy do I wish it was the one Battle Chip Hero Sword. And lastly, before the rapid fire round is 
Blazing Buddy Batsu. He's 2 MP cheaper than our other legendaries, and it does not show. Getting combo with agility is so good and just about guaranteed thanks to the Thunder Edge buff, but the legendary effect here is his quest. Effect damage becomes 1, wins the red matchup when played, and Crush Agility tends to win the green matchup. Batsu is so much power that all the dudes who fought him in Schoolyard Royale definitely got beat. And now, Dread King Wrath is the iconic Thunder Edge win condition, but it will die more than the other legendaries. Wandering Guardian Beast is everything Wrath wishes it could be in 2024, and it's the strongest card in the deck. Resistance Hero Zero is our only hope against green, and the highest attack stat for the buffed Thunder Edge. Hinata is a huge comeback mechanic, able to activate Byakugan like crazy with the buffed Thunder Edge. I think every red deck might try running Thunder Edge just to try this card at peak. Heroic Strike is better dual Dragon Hado. Easy Piece of Pie is pure copium to keep up with what green is doing. Right Hand Demon Burial is another free win in the green mirror, and more copium for green. Beautiful 8 Mia is an- is- And fighting Crimson Fighter Fefnir is in case you don't win faster for some reason. He literally never comes up. Here's the deck QR for you, and with all that said, let's get into it! Game 1, we are up against Edo Wong Blackout. A deck loaded up on interaction, but not a lot of interaction that's good against our best cards, so... This should hopefully be a solid combo showcase. First we have one of the combos we talked about at the start, Saritobi Sasuke into Made with Love, and our opponent plays down the perfect fodder for us to destroy. But of course we're gonna get extra risky and go for Blazing Buddy Batsu to get his destroyed by damage effect, and our opponent will play down a Battle Chip Merchant which poses a big threat to our, our Batsu, so we will play down our Hinata to back up Sarutobi, something that I'm sure never happened in the anime. Uh, anyway, we will go for Thunder Edge on our Hinata to force their ONP in the middle lane, keeping our Batsu alive to threaten lethal pressure. Our opponent can block one more time in the top lane, and now they have Blackout to defeat our Batsu, but unfortunately for them, we are at 10 MP and can play down our Bite to win game one. Game two. If Edo Wong was a good matchup, this is our best matchup. Kind of the epitome of me showing really lucky games, but with a cheesy deck like this, that's kind of the game plan. Our opponent will start things off with the exact card that makes this matchup so favored, Zombie, because Saratobi is guaranteed to laser lock onto that unit and get his plus two plus two, and then we can go for Sweat Tears and Friendship for a plus 7, plus 7, and he goes up to a 13, 17. When we go for Chairperson destroying their first revenge unit, they are able to get... I thought the, it would be the zombie is the one that we didn't remove, and Thrasher is also an opportunity for them to get something in their revenge. But it's already over. We take Game 2. Game 3. We're playing red into the strongest green deck of the meta, the strongest deck of the meta. It's gonna be an uphill battle, but hopefully it should make for some exciting teppin. Unfortunately, it won't be exciting for a while, so you, you, you guys will just have to uh, believe that the game will get better than this, because there's not th really anything I can do to make it better than that. Uh, it's great Teppin, actually. Trust me, this is great Teppin. I'm just planning ahead, and our opponent... Um, we're bricked, so we are just gonna eventually throw out an action. I, it, it happened after a whole minute, and we thankfully drew into a card that we can play. Right Hand Demon Burial is a perfect starter. We got two AP up on him, and our opponent's able to seal the card and get some serious MP ramp going. We'll go for a pretty greedy shield, but that does almost keep them out of the range of our Saratobi Sasuke, which we will set up with our our, 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 our right-hand Demon Burrell dying, and our opponent will go for a 
pretty huge gone Isarugi into Double Breaker, but thankfully for us, our Sarutobi will survive. We can use Chair Person to get the 50 50 and destroy the gone Isarugi, and now we are set up. If only we had the Thunder Edge buff, we could end the game right now. We are thankfully able to go for Hero Strike to try and destroy their Muscular, but they had one last shield with the guard, and they will go for another guard to get another shield. And we have a lot of work here, but we can go for our 1 MP Fireforged Friendship. And our opponent has to use shield to protect their muscular, but we have another answer with Made with Love. They take the bait and we clear their board. We've got an 8-1 Sarutobi Sasuke, and we will go for our Cyber Elf Ballet, getting us the agility we need to survive. Chun-Li will go for Thunder Edge to make it feel even faster, and we will go for our Sweat Tears Friendship to end the game for one over lethal on chairperson. And after a beastly pop-off like that, we've got to go for a victory lap. Especially given one more shot against the best deck played by a top 25 player. All we've got to do is pull out every stop. We will start things off this time with the Colonel Shuffle, and our opponent will go for a classic Chef Muscular into Feline, into Chun-Li getting in 8 direct. We will go for a fairly pitiful chair person in response, bouncing it back with Colonel, and we will go for Sweat 2's Friendship getting up to a 13-17. We can go for Heroic Strike to protect ourselves from the next Chun-Li attack, and our opponent will surprisingly go for Shield to protect their Muscular. This gives us the chance to go for Cyber Elf Ballet to get ourselves the AP for our Thunder Edge, and right before the attack connects, we are able to break the shield with Made With Love, and we are able to go for Thunder Edge for the second shield. At this point, it's all but over. Our opponent has one chance to break our shield and go for a big Chun-Li, but they didn't have the MP to do it at the right time. We are able to clear their board with Hinata, and we take Game 4. Here we are again, and... I've never been this ready for a balance patch. I am so ready to steal wins that I did not deserve to, to win. <laughs> Making this strategy more consistent is hilarious. <laughs> I'm honestly probably gonna play normal Rush Red with the new supplemental epic. Let me know down below if you guys would be interested in a quick take on some straight ahead kinda red. But otherwise, this gimmicky Thunder Edge brew has the highest potential to catch people unprepared. Very simple, very powerful. I do have a budget version here for you, of course. But this one's, if you're not starting Teppin this month, it's not budget at all. This is taking advantage of the free starter deck that any new player gets by watching the tutorial video. So if you joined either this month or last, this is the perfect deck to to modify and cheese out. The, 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 the original is probably a little more consistent, but here's a super fun cheesy version to play as well. As for the next video, it's about to be the three-year anniversary of the channel! And I, I'm hoping to still have that third video of the month out on the anniversary of the channel. It should be a very special Gimmick Champion episode, so keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, as always, thank you guys for watching. Please like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe if you subscribed. Once again, I'm Skontulus, and I'll see you in the next one.